We are living in the last days. We are living in the end times. But for the blood-bought child of God, that's a good thing. Oh, but the end of the world could come. Praise God. I hope it does. The end of man's filth? I mean, we're into quantum computing and genetic editing and CRISPR-Cas9. This has only happened in one generation. And, it's, and all of these things we've talked about are coming like this. So ask me again, do I think we're in the end times? Yes, absolutely we are. I don't think it. I know it. We are now living in the most prophetic time since the first coming of Jesus Christ. I could take an hour or two and prove that to you. <laughs> we don't have that kind of time right now, but we really are. I preach and teach on it all the time, and I've written books on it, and, 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 and this prophecy conference I'm doing, I spent an hour and a half talking about why it is and, and how we know that we are living in the most prophetic time since the first coming of Jesus. Now, the deal is, I don't set dates, though. And I don't pull out charts and graphs and maps and try to line it all out and say, listen, I've got the perfect understanding of this. Now, I'm open to looking at charts and graphs and maps. I'm not making fun of that. I'm just saying that there's so much prophecy is so intricate and complicated, complicated in that it requires context, it requires foundation, it requires connection to the rest of the scripture. You can't just go in and take one prophetic utterance, pull it out, and think that you, you've got everything in a box. That was the fault of the Pharisees. They had their, their vision of what Messiah was supposed to look like, who he, who, where he would come from, what he would do, what he would do for them, that he would actually bolster their ministry and elevate them to places of leadership. They had such a box, their charts, their graphs, and their maps, that when Messiah was standing right in front of them, not only did they miss him, they hated him. And in the name of God, they crucified the Son of God outside the temple of God, thinking they were doing God a favor. I don't want to be that guy. And I'm trying to wake up the church. Look, we're living in very prophetic times. Israel's back in the land. Jerusalem now belongs to Israel. You know, the Middle East is on fire. Syria has collapsed. Turkey's collapsing into an Ottoman Empire. Russia's in alignment with Persia. Persia and North Korea. China's got their first military base out of their nation. I mean, on and on. The borders are collapsing. Western culture's being overrun by Islam and political correctness and, you know, and gay marriage. And we don't know what a marriage is anymore. We don't know what a gender is. We don't know what a little boy or a little girl girl is. I mean, people, if, if we can't see this, then to think of the technology explosion. And I love technology. I'm a techno geek. So I'm not one of those old guys that say, well, that newfangled stuff, that's of the devil. Well, but here's the deal. We have eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So every technological boom that comes forward, CRISPR-Cas9, that's amazing. Genetic editing, that's astounding. Can we use it for good? Absolutely. We can bless people's lives. But is it going to be used only for good? Absolutely not. In fact, now it's already perverted and perverse, and we have not yet seen the bottom of that dark hole. All right? Robotics and, 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 and artificial intelligence. Can we use that for good? Oh, my gosh. It, it, would, it would just make the whole world transformed in some wonderful ways. But the problem is we build the robots we put artificial intelligence, and then the makers of it say, I know what, let's have sex with it. It's, it's just the perversion is uncontrollable. Pandora's box has been opened. So when you put all this stuff together, and then you understand that we're the first generation in humankind to see the convergence of all this stuff since the return of Israel just 70 years ago. Just seven years, our historical lifetime. You and I, neither one of us are 70 years old, but you and I both grew up with Israel has always been there in our lifetime, but it really hasn't. It's just been seven little decades. Seven little decades, it's been there. 2,700 years before that, there was no Israel. Yet the Word of God said in the last days, I'm bringing it back, and I'm paraphrasing, but God says it in Ezekiel 38, 39, says it in Deuteronomy 4, and several other scriptures. In paraphrasing, he says, and when I do this, then the nations will know that I am the Lord, and there is no other. I will bring them back, in the sight of the nations. This will be my witness to the nations that I am the Lord. And I'm going to paraphrase and add this because this is the implication of it and that we are in the last days. When you see Israel return, we're 70 years. We're just a few months the other side of Jerusalem being restored. Another 2,700 year old prophecy that we're living in the midst of and 98% of the pastors in America never mentioned it. 
and to this day haven't mentioned it. So yes, we're living in the end times, and what that means is we're, we're getting so close to the return of the Lord. Now, I know there's going to be an antichrist system, but, but as, as horrific as that is, if we understand the scriptures correctly, that's just a short period. I mean, seven years maybe, and that's what most of the charts and graphs and maps say, if they're correct of taking that literally. Seven years. Well, what's seven years? I remember seven years ago like it was yesterday. I mean, time's moving, and it's coming like a flood, just like the Word of God said. So, so I know that's got to happen, but that could happen in our lifetime. Um, and, and so, you know, and then, well, where's the rapture? There's rapture. Is it pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib? Some people say there's not even a rapture. I happen to believe the scripture is very clear. There is a, some kind of a protecting, a taking out, a taking away, a catching away. Those words are actually used, as you probably know, in, in, in the original languages, and they're translated into the English. So, so the bottom line is we're living in the most prophetic time since the first coming of Jesus Christ because the next big prophecy prior to his second coming was the return of Israel. Well, we're there. Then the return of Jerusalem to Israel. Well, we're there. Then the collapse of Middle Eastern nations, Syria particularly, the joining of Russia and Persia and you know all this stuff. Well, that's happening. Uh, terror, terrorism, men's hearts will fail them because of the terror of those days. Well, we're there. I mean, you could go on and on and on. Christian persecution will be worse than ever before, Jesus said. And I know that when people look at that, they say, well, that's in the middle of the Great Tribulation. Maybe so, but all I know is all of the stats, all of the people that collect this information um, have recorded very, very accurately and faithfully that in our generation, there are more Christians put to death every day and every year than collectively in the entirety of Christianity before us. So we are already living in the prophecy of Jesus where he said in those last days before the return of the Son of Man, you'll be put to death, you'll be killed by the sword, yada, 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 and it'll be worse than anything before. It'll be, and, 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 and already it is. Now, people might be screaming at me right now saying, but it's going to get worse. I, I think it is. I think you're right. All I'm saying is we're already there. So you began by asking the question, you know, are we living in the last days? Now, I want to make sure that your audience understands this, and I'm sure most of them do, but you're always getting new viewers and listeners and new Christians, new people to the Word. When we use the word, the phrase, last days, or the end of time, you know, or the great day of the Lord, that can be scary to people, but I, I want people to get the biblical perspective. All that means is, well, I don't want to use the word all, because that diminishes it. What it means is, it's the last day of man's wicked rule and reign and the beginning of the reign of Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible says we should comfort each other with these words. We should pray for the speed of its coming. We should look forward to that day. We who? We that are under the blood. We that are on the winning side. We that are ambassadors for the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So, so do I look forward to the end of time? I look forward to the end of man's time. I want President Jesus on the throne. King Jesus, if you will, you know, uh, uh, Prime Minister Jesus, whatever title you want to give him, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, I want him on the throne. I mean, I'm looking forward to the restitution of all things. I'm looking forward eventually to a new heaven, a new earth, no more crying, no more pain, no more death, like it was in the garden, the restitution all the way back to the original Garden of Eden scenario and all that God's going to do from that point forward. So when the Bible speaks of last days and you ask me, are we in the last days? Yes, we are. I'm not setting dates. I don't know. Antichrist, the return of the Lord, that could happen in our lifetime. It may be 100 years from now, maybe 200 years from now, but I doubt it. And, and I could be wrong, but I doubt it. It might be 2,000 more years from now, but I doubt it. Just everything's coming together so quickly. And I truly believe part of that countdown clock is the return of Israel. And so, so that's happened. And we're 70 years. That's a prophetic, profound number. You know, I'm not trying to do numerology here, but the Bible speaks heavily. The, the 70 weeks of Daniel, seven, seven times 10, the 10 commandments, the number of God's administration, seven, perfection, completion, 70 years, 70 nations. But the bottom line is, without getting into numerology and trying to predict crystal ball kind of numbers line up, I, I, I'm just speaking of God's biblical numbers. God is a God of math and numbers and, 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 and intelligence and design. And so the Word of God is designed with that, that, in, that intelligence embedded in it, and a lot of it's wrapped around numbers. The number of His name is 666. See, the numbers are important. And so here we are. We're 70 years the other side of Israel. 
So when Jerusalem was restored, it was restored. It was restored in a year of Jubilee. And you see, you see, so Jerusalem was liberated in 1918. Uh, from uh, the the Ottoman Empire and the Islamic horde and the it, it was liberated that was a year of Jubilee 50 years later is 1968 yeah the seven the seven day, uh, the, the, the seven day war and that was a liberation of Israel that was the liberation of Jerusalem to a returned Israel where t basic title deed is being restored 50 years later, okay, 2018, 2018, the year that Donald Trump signs the American Embassy Act. So in every year of Jubilee, it was 1918, 1968, 2018, boom, 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 right in there, um, you've in, uh, is, is, is Jerusalem is being restored. You can see the hand of God doing this, and it's happening in our historical lifetime. We're the only generation to see all of this happening. And it's basically all, the clock started ticking on all this when Jerusalem was restored. I said this yesterday in, in my message, I made this point. Just think about it. When, when Israel was restored to the land in 1948, when, when that happened, it, it, people watched it on a grainy black and white television. If, if you were lucky, because you know, you had to have an antenna high enough and there were three networks and if you were lucky, you got one of them. <laughs> and if you were in a city, I mean, you might've gotten two or three. But, and that was information systems back then. That was the technology. Um, now, I mean, we didn't have a remote control. I mean, 1948 remote control was, hey son, get up, turn the TV up, change the channel. That was a remote control. The children were the remote control in 1948. We, we, didn't, we didn't have anything. But here's Israel. Now think, in 70 little short years, seven little decades, not even a whole lifetime of most humans, look what's happened. From grainy black and white television, the restoration of Israel, technology has exploded. I mean, we're into quantum computing and genetic editing and CRISPR-Cas9 and instantaneous information uh, communication uh, networks and satellite and cable and 24-7 and, and news cycle and military machinery and equipment and uh, circumnavigating the globe and nuclear-powered uh, submarines and aircraft carriers and space shuttles and space probes out in deep space beyond our galaxy. From a black and white TV, seven decades ago, to this, and it's still exploding. AI, robotics, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And, and this has only happened in one generation. And, it's, and all of these things we've talked about are coming like this. So ask me again, do I think we're in the end times? Yes, absolutely we are. I don't think it, I know it. Now, I don't know a day, but we, we are there. We are there, and it's time for the church to wake up to this fact. Live accordingly. We are ambassadors for the kingdom. Don't walk around. It says don't be anxious about these things. God's not given us a spirit of fear. We're, we're his representatives. He's chosen us for this time. We've been raised up for such a time as this. I've, I've only got 70 or 80 years if I'm blessed to, to, to do what I do. So I'm going to do it, you know. But yeah, but the end of the world could come. Praise God. I hope it does. The end of man's filth and the beginning of the righteous reign of Jesus Christ? I'm looking forward to it. So in the meantime, you say, well, how do you, how do you live your life, Carl? I, as I was saying in my presentation, I, I mow the grass, and I pay the bills, and I educate the children, and I plan for the future. I plan for my elder years and retirement if, if the Lord doesn't come in the midst of that. Because we don't know the day or the hour, but we know the season. We know, we know where we are. You know, God's throne knows the day and the hour. We don't. And there's no way we can discern it. There's no way we can figure out the day and the hour. So I don't worry about that. I just get on with life. I, 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 listen, I could, a, a semi-truck could run a stop sign today, and my life is done. I, I report back. So we don't have a guarantee of another day. You know, I say, we will live 70, 80, 90 years. Well, maybe. <laughs> we might not live past today. Uh, so that's the perspective I'm trying to give the church. Is, look, just, just chill. Here's the times we're living in. Look what's happening. It cannot be denied. We are living in the last days. We are living in the end times. But for the blood-bought child of God, that's a good thing. 
In the meantime, you're an ambassador for the, for the coming kingdom. So get on with your life, enjoy your life, enjoy all the good things of this life. But remember, much, much better is coming. And so let's be an ambassador of that. Let's, let's stand on the word, let's stand in the word, let's, let's preach and proclaim the name of Jesus, salvation, praying that God would bring people to salvation, bring re- prodigals home, and to encourage and equip the saints in these times. That's, that's my ministry, that's my heart. Thank you for asking me.